Hello, so today we will discuss the treatment of peripheral artery disease and we can divide the treatment if into different groups and we have for example lifestyle changes so I will draw a cigarette here and this is something that is does not belong in your mouth okay so you don't need cigarette to to live it's not important for you it's not a good, a good investment so please throw this away because this is a really really high risk factor for peripheral artery disease and I cannot emphasize that more. So, so when you hear that, okay, you should not smoke, everybody does know this. Okay, so this is not a, it's not a new information, but please, I'm not joking. Smoking is so bad that it belongs, I don't want to say where, but somewhere else, okay? Exercise. Another important thing that you need to do, invest in yourself exercise eat healthy this is an apple eat fruits vegetables exercise and stop smoking these are the three things that you need to try so the patient comes in we will try this for three months and if this alone does not help because let's say he, he, has, he has been smoking he has not been training he has been eating bad food so I don't want to say specifically but fast food for let's say he has been doing this for 20 years and I'm trying to treat this patient and I'm trying these things for three months and I see that it's not really enough because the peripheral artery disease, the atherosclerosis is so severe now that it's very hard to, to, to really uh, make a big change with only these things. But you need to do this anyway. But what we will add into this mix is some medications. So this is a lifestyle. Then we have medications here. And it, I will write silostazole. Silostazole. And we have something called nafti dro furyl. Nafti dro furyl and silostazole. These are two medications that have been, been proven to help peripheral to these patients in, for example, wa uh, increasing the walking distance. So if the patient comes in and complains, yeah, I can only walk for 100 meters and then I get pain. Please try these two medications and you will see that it can improve the walking distance for, let's say, 200, 300 meters or even more. And if you combine this with stop smoking, exercising and eat a healthy diet, then we will see even longer distances and even le less complaints. And the disease will then, then suddenly disappear. Unfortunately, not so easy, but we have to have hope, okay? So that if we do this, if we do this, it should work. And if it does not work, because many patients are so severe that it's, 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 it's not possible with these two things, lifestyle and medication, then we need to go on with some interventions. And interventions are, are when we do something in the body we intervene into the body and we have two main groups of interventions we have endovascular treatment and then we have open surgical procedure the fancy name here what we can we can uh, say is pta which is an abbreviation of percutaneous transluminal angioplasty percutaneous transluminal angioplasty PTA okay and cutaneous stands for skin luminal is the lumen of the artery and angio is the vascular so what we do is we take a wire we put that into the skin into the arteries and then what we do here is that we have the stenosis here in the artery, in peripheral artery disease. We take this wire here into the stenosis. Then what we do, we dilate this balloon. It's a balloon. So this is one way. So percutaneous transluminal angioplasty have two, two possibilities. Either we use a balloon. So this is the balloon. And what we will get then is here a big, big balloon, which we have inflated here. 
and we remove the balloon and then this arterial flow should be good and then no symptoms. So this is the first thing that we do after medications, endovascular. The open is more, more advanced uh, and, I, and I need to mention in endo one more, we said we have balloon and then we have something called stent. Stent is, I will draw it here, stent is when we put a metal inside here so this is not the balloon this is a hard metal that we put inside the artery and that that is better when we are considering restenosis restenosis means that the artery gets stenosed again so we, we did this balloon and then unfortunately after a couple of months we get this stenosis again and we have to remake this balloon uh, this balloon treatment because these arteries are usually getting stenosed again because there's nothing here but if we have some metal and some hard stuff in your artery that is not allowing the artery wall to get constricted to get stenosed then that's better but the side effect of this is that this is a foreign material so the the body hates when we put stuff into us okay so if if we put a metal inside a vascular system then the cells of the blood cells will hate us and they will create a thrombosis here so they will clog this this stent and that can be a can be a problem so we need to take medications when we when we uh, put the stent for for example clopidogrel and, and these aspirin so we have antiplatelet drugs and I said that we have two, two main drugs for peripheral arterial disease, specifically peripheral arterial disease, but in general, for atherosclerosis in general, because atherosclerosis affects all the arteries in your body, so it can affect your heart arteries, the coronary arteries, and then you can get the myocardial infarction. So in general, what we talk, is, talk about is that we can secondarily, we can prevent atherosclerosis by using, for example, aspirin aspirin and if aspirin is not um, really good because it has side effects in this patient or uh, the patient is allergic to aspirin then we can use clopidogrel so aspirin and clopidogrel aspirin usually 75 usually 75 to 100 milligram clopidogrel also usually 75 milligram per day and these are very good if you want to talk about more general stuff also, we can draw a man here. Big, big belly, belly. Okay? And what will we do? Here, it's just showing that he's so fat. He has a lot of cholesterol because in peripheral artery disease, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a typical thing that the patient has a lot of cholesterol. Okay? And what we can give is statin for the cholesterol. Then as we said, he's smoking. Stop that, please. Then what we can do is blood pressure cuff is measuring, for example, more than 140. So we have a high blood pressure. What we can give to this patient is some beta blockers, for example. So beta one blockers then in the cough region we can use compressions compression cough compression and in the foot region for example if there are ulcers in the foot region then we need to take care of the wound so wound care because if we have a wound, we can get an infection. If we get an infection, we can get sepsis, shock, and death, and you can die. So you can die of peripheral artery disease by a simple wound, by a simple ulcer, because the bacteria get into your blood and that can cause a sepsis and shock and death. So it's very important to have. Wound care is more important than you think. Then we have cough compression have been seen to be good. So the walking distance for patients can be increased by, uh, by this compression. Other thing, if we draw a hand, a hand here, 
and then we make a point here indicating blood and we measure the blood with with a glucose device so we can measure the glucose here and we see that the glucose is less than 7% so the A1C value the, I will discuss that in another video so we can measure the glucose the A1C value of the glucose and if it's less than 7% that's good in peripheral artery disease it should be we should keep the glucose level below 7% so we measure the blood, we see that the glucose is less than 7%, that's good. We see that the blood pressure is high, we, we reduce it with beta blockers. If we uh, see that the cholesterol is high, we use statins. If we see that the glucose is high, we can use, for example, metformin. Depending on which diabetes we have, metformin or their insulin. Metformin or insulin. Okay, so these are the general stuff. Stop smoking, exercise, eat healthy diet, give statins for cholesterol, give metformin insulin for diabetes, please use beta-1 blockers for hypertension, please use compression, and please uh, take care of the wounds. That's the general stuff. For the specific parts, please use silostazole or naftidrofirol or general medications, please use aspirin for antiplatelet drugs so these are antiplatelet drugs or if aspirin is not good then please use clopidogrel if these all things do not work go on with endovascular treatment with the percutaneous translumen angioplasty use the balloon technique or use stents stent that's the stent and if this is not enough then we go on with the open. That's surgery. This is surgery. That's serious stuff. We are talking about a specialist, a vascular surgeon who have high, high experience in, in making something called bypass. And actually what we do here is that we have a stenosis. The same stenosis. And instead of making this balloon thing or stand, we bypass it we take a vein from another part of your body and we put it here and then we let the blood flow in this direction instead because here it doesn't flow anymore because it's stenosed so we bypass that here that's called a bypass that's a surgical operation and this is the last thing we do and we i have done a video uh, discussing something called t-a-s-c classification and just to just to make a point here of the TASC classification TASC number two this is a classification of peripheral artery disease which is very very important to summarize the whole presentation I would say that we do open surgery bypass instead of endo when we have long stenosis meaning that are the long segment of the arteries stenosis, or we have multiple stenosis meaning stenosis in many many places so many arteries or we have calcium so calcific deposits so long stenosis multiple stenosis or calcific stenosis of the arteries that's in the TASC2 classification and that it, it's an indication for doing open surgery bypass and not endovascular so this is pretty much it so to recap a patient comes in and i tell the patient to stop smoking exercise eat a healthy diet after three months i will add silostazole or naftidrofirol the doses here are two times 100 milligram per day and for naftidrofirol it's 600 milligram per day and i see that it's not working i need to go on with endovascular with the percutaneous translumen angioplasty i need to do a balloon or a stent 
If this does not work, then I go on with open surgery, that is the bypass. And, and we have to remember one thing, that endovascular have better short-term short results than open. But open, the surgery, have better long-term results. So if this is a patient which is very old, has many, many diseases, so for example heart disease and so on, then I would do the endovascular because short-termly this is better and the patient will not live long enough to benefit from a serious surgical procedure with anesthesia, with, the, with all the complications that can come with the surgical procedure. Endo, that's, so the, the order of priority is always to make the simplest test, the cheapest test, the, the test, the, not test, the, the treatment with sim, which is the most simple, which is the cheapest, and which has the, less, the least complications. So the least complications always stop smoking, exercise, diet, then medications, and then endovascular, and then surgery. Okay, and as we said, the general stuff that we need to remember that this patient, when he comes in, we need to take care of the cholesterol with statins, we need to take care of the blood glucose with metformin or insulin, we need to take care of the you know, blood pressure with beta-1 blockers, and we need to take care of the compression uh, with the compression, um, cough compression, and then we take care of the wound so we don't get infection. And that's pretty much it. So remember, these are the hard things to remember, silostazol and naftidrofiriol. But these two medications are very specific because aspirin and clopidogrel are general for atherosclerosis because aspirin and clopidogrel are antiplatelet drugs that is good for atherosclerosis. And if aspirin is uh, having uh, complications, then we use clopidogrel. Okay? Thank you very much for listening.